Good morning, everybody. My name is Barry Schwartz, and this is the Search Buzz Video Recap. Today is Friday, June 30th, and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at seroundtable.com over the past week. We had a very, very heated Google search results week again with a big spike yesterday. Google Sitemaps is getting rid of their ping support to the endpoints. That's coming up later. Bing Webmaster Tools Index Coverage Report seems to be rolling out for some folks, and much more on AI, search, local, PPC, and so much more. So definitely stay tuned. And all of you are wondering who won the contest. Stay tuned. I picked a winner randomly by just closing my eyes and just moving my mouse over the page, and I picked one. So stay tuned to the end where I announced the winner for the Blue Sky Invite. And I apologize for last week where I had a cold, went a little bit too fast, generally faster than I usually do. And I didn't, probably didn't sound so good, but I do feel a lot better, not 100%. Um, so thanks again for watching and subscribing and for all that type of stuff. I appreciate it. We have no sponsor today just because it's the fifth Friday and I didn't book a sponsor for a fifth Friday in a month. Uh, but... I appreciate it to all our sponsors who have sponsored us over the years. Thank you so much. Okay, so first up, Google's search results are really, really getting heated again. Um, this spike starting around, I don't know, June 28th, and then big time on June 29th. All the tools are showing it. SEMrush was off the scales. Um, SERP metrics, Rank Ranger, Advanced Web Ranking, AccuRanker, MozCast, Cognitive SEO, Algoo, and others. Um, the chatter was significant as well. It's just so weird. We expected a Google update confirmed by Google by now. The last confirmed Google update was in April 2023 for the reviews update, and it's been some time. We thought we would have a core update by now. We thought these would be the core updates. Google has not announced anything as of yet. Trust me, I check several times a day, um, but there's nothing. We've had a very, very busy June, a very, very busy May, and it doesn't seem to be ending. Maybe this is the new normal. Google announced that they're going to be dropping ping endpoint support for sitemaps, for XML sitemaps. So in about six months, by the end of the year sometime, Google will be dropping support for allowing your, you to ping Google that you have a new URL or new update in your Google sitemap file, in your XML sitemap file. Google began supporting sitemap pings back in 2007, um, and it seems to be going away. Instead, Google's saying um, they will pick up the updates using um, Google Search Console, your own inspection tool, and also... Um, in your robots.txt file. Uh, plus, you could go ahead and use the last mod date um, to go ahead and communicate to Google that these URLs were updated. Of course, if you just put any last mod date and it doesn't actually update and you're not really doing a significant update to the page, Google's going to trust that last mod update less and they won't count it going forward. So keep that in mind. Those are going away. I have a lot more history um, on this change on the search engine roundtable, so definitely check that out if you're interested. Bing Webmaster Tools um, promised us a, two new things. One is a Bing chat performance report, which we expected to happen earlier this month or late last month, it didn't happen. It's still not out yet. Google, Bing is still working on that, but we do see people, some people seeing the new Bing Webmaster Tool sitemap index coverage report out in the wild. I do not see it yet, but there are two people that I found on the web that are seeing this new live sitemap index coverage report. Uh, this is spotted by uh, Vijay and also Rafa Martin. So definitely a nice catch and looking forward to everybody getting this report. Google again said that word count is not a thing for SEO. Google's ranking, Google's not using it word count for ranking purposes. Google said um, this, including John Mueller and Danny Sullivan's the search liaison. Um, he went ahead and quoted the helpful content documentation as well, saying, reminder, the best word count needed to succeed in Google search is not a thing. It doesn't exist. Write as long or short as needed for people who read your content. And that's aligned with what Google's ranking system says. And John Mueller again said, are you saying top ranking pages should have the most words? That's definitely not the case, he said. So um, keep that in mind. Again, word count is not a thing. Of course, people are like, Google's lying. Take what you want. Take whatever you want from that. But again, Google has said this over time many, 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 many times. Uh, Gary from Google said that new websites, homepages should be indexed without a problem. If you have a new web page, a new website, a brand new website, and the homepage is not getting indexed after a couple weeks, and you have URLs to it from normal sites, uh, links to it from normal sites, then there's probably something wrong with the website in general, which is why John Mueller said a week or so ago that you should always launch a new website bef um, and let it launch before you actually go ahead and migrate content from it. So if you're moving site from site A to site B, launch site B first, see what happens, does it get indexed or not, and if it seems okay, then you can migrate content to it. Glenn Gabe noticed that the perspectives, the dedicated perspectives carousel um, box on this mobile search results is going live for him. I don't see, I saw it live in one of my tests, but I haven't seen it live fully yet. So it might be rolling out right now. Google launched the perspectives filter a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, actually. Um, and now it seems like Google's starting to roll out the perspectives 
dedicated box in the mobile search results, which is super interesting. I noticed when I did test that the research results shown in the dedicated perspectives box was exactly matching to the discussions and forums feature from months and months ago or years ago. Um, so maybe this is just an adaptation of discussion and forums and now they're calling it perspectives, which does a lot more obviously, uh, but just keep that in mind. Nice find from Glenn. Google is testing larger images uh, for search ads, not just in the mobile results, but also in the desktop results. This was spotted by Anthony Higman, um, who posted a screenshot or two on the site. I wasn't able to replicate this on desktop. I was able to replicate this on mobile, but Google has been testing larger image ads um, throughout many, many years. Um, but this is, seems to be going on again with Google. Google is also testing larger product images um, in the search results. Again, something that Google has been testing many, many times. This one was spotted by Frank Santman, as well as Shaheem. Um, who noticed larger images being shown in the search results snippets for product related results. So nice find there as well. Google search has um, product information and sometimes Google's testing where you click on a product and it shows you the pricing of that product over a three month time frame, especially if that pricing has fluctuated a lot. It will show you this graph showing how much has gone up or down. This was spotted by Punnett, who actually I noticed, who actually was noticed that this back in 2002. Um, in December, I actually wrote about this as well, but it was a different graph, it was on mobile as well. So um, Google has this typically priced across and now they're showing these three months of pricing over, over time. I think this is more common to see when the price fluctuates significantly for that product or not. Bing announced some changes to their shopping features. Specifically, they have new AI generated features for Bing Chat, for Bing Search, for Edge Sidebar, including buying guides, um, review summaries and price match. The buying guides are generated using AI and can include uh, a lot of cool suggestions and guides that give you comparisons of products, uh, such as specifications and other variables. Uh, review summaries are generated using AI to pull from what people are saying the product, about the product online, uh, which makes sense for AI stuff, including top insights and popular opinions about certain types of products and categories. And then the price match will then go ahead and show you if you have any price changes uh, from when you purchased the, that product. And if you should go ahead and ask the retailer for a price drop, which is super interesting as well. This is an interesting one. The Bing search answer knowledge panel feature on the right hand side, they're actually showing emojis where you can actually react to certain lines of text in that answer. Super interesting. Here's a screenshot from Shaheem who noticed this as well. Um, it's very, very interesting. I find it fun and interactive, but I don't know if people are gonna use this so much. We will see. It looks like Bing chat could predict or illustrate what it thinks might be the probability of stock prices or options going up or down for specific categories. This is spotted by Mikkel or actually announced by Mikkel uh, Parahin, who basically is the CEO of Bing search. He, he works at Microsoft and runs up Bing search there. Um, and he showed the screenshot, which kind of shows that, but Mikkel basically said it's not a stock price prediction system. He said, um, he had me quote a new feature we're starting to flight in inferring the market's probability of future stock prices from option prices. This is not done by any other free consumer tool yet. Um, but basically he shared the screenshot that kind of shows the probability of a stock price going up or down, which is pretty interesting. Um, I probably do a better job than humans anyway. Uh, Microsoft also wants their Bing chat to be available on Apple CarPlay and Google's Android Auto. But basically Mikkel um, from Bing said, yes, we do want that, but not everything depends on us here. Uh, but it would be really cool. Meaning Apple and Google might not approve it. It's very hard to get your apps approved by Apple on CarPlay. I know that from firsthand experience because Apple doesn't want every single app to be there because it could be a distraction for the drivers. Uh, Google said, uh, they said, announced or emailed out a lot of people that their uh, buy on Google feature, which has been alive, I think since 2015, Google had other versions of this as well over the years, where people could buy directly a product from the Google search results directly on Google search and buy it there. That's going away by September 26th in the US. It's not going away for YouTube or for Shopify and stuff like that, but it is going away for buy on Google on search specifically. Um, and keep that in mind. Here's a screenshot of the email the merchants received. This is from Nahum Ani, which is pretty interesting. Um, and there's a whole lot of information there. Google actually is piloting a new version which takes people directly to the checkout page on that merchant site, which we covered a couple weeks ago. Um, which I have a screenshot again of that. The Google local panels are testing, showing, or actually see this buy owner um, options button. So if you click on the buy owner option in the local panel for a specific business listing, it will show you what the owner updated for their description and any Google updates or Google posts from that owner. This was spotted by Amy Toman, and I was able, actually, able to actually replicate this myself 
um, which is pretty cool. I wonder if it's gonna last. I kind of doubt it, but maybe it will last. We'll see. Google Ads had a big bug this, uh, this week. It was on J June 27th, a few days ago, where the recent data from your Google Ads campaigns were not showing up in the ad advertiser's console. So advertisers were like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to change my ads. I don't know what's going on with my ads because there's no data coming in. That bug lasted for about four hours, but Google finally fixed it. Uh, but just keep in mind, Google Ads does have bugs and they have it fairly commonly. Also, Google Ads announced new brand restrictions uh, for um, search campaigns. These are new features they announced a while ago, but now they're rolling out right now. And also brand exclu exclusions for performance max campaigns. So I have a whole instructions today this morning on how to actually use them. But if you wanna go ahead and do brand restrictions for search or brand exclusions for performance max, you can now do that according to Google. It's rolling out right now. Google ads may start to disapprove ads uh, that are using third-party click tracking solutions. Google has a bunch of approved third-party click tracking solutions that you can use. And if yours is not approved, you can actually apply for approval but this will start to be, this, this, using these types of tracking tools that are not approved by Google will eventually start to lead to Google actually disapproving those ads um, starting August 28th. So keep that in mind. The Google ad liaison, Jeannie Marvin, gave a detailed explainer around the value of using value-based bidding. So there's a whole long thread, I guess, took all the tweets over the course of the week and put them in a thread where it's a Q&A on value-based bidding. So definitely take a look at that if you're interested. I posted that on June 27th at seroundtable.com. Microsoft Advertising is updating all its policies, or a lot of significant policies are on starting on July 1st. So as of next week, you will start to see new Microsoft Advertising policies rolling out, um, intended to provide greater visibility uh, for them. Keep in mind, these changes are happening. There's transparency updates, there's additional policy updates, and page updates that are not related to policy updates. So definitely take a look at them. I posted all those details on June 26th at seroundtable.com. And finally, Google Analytics, it finally supports AMP pages, which is which is great. Um, we've been waiting for it for a while. We've been asking for a while. What did I do? I used to have AMP on my site. I removed all the AMP pages because it was just a pain in the neck to get AMP working with GA4. Um, there's something wrong with it, according to a lot of people. It's just not working. So I decided to remove my AMP pages and follow the directions. Hopefully my rankings won't drop significantly, but we will see. According to, I think AMP is on its way out anyway. It has been for a while. And I figured, hey, this is the reason to go ahead and do that push. So I get the tracking in place all in one place. In any event, GA4's deadline is, I think, Sunday. So it's going to stop collecting data as of tomorrow, Saturday. And then starting July 1st, no more data will be collected in Universal Analytics 3, the current version of Google Analytics. And all tracking is going to go forward with GA4 or an alternative that you might have used on your website. So I hope, you all, I hope that all goes well. Finally, I'd like to announce the winner of the Blue Sky Contest winner. It's Olga Zar from SEO Sly. Um, Olga, thank you so much for everything you do. And congratulations, I will DM you, I think on Twitter, um, the invite code. And thanks for everybody who participated and subscribed and commented, I appreciate it. Everyone have a great, healthy, safe, and happy weekend. And I'll see you guys next again. My name is Barry Schwartz, and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at scroundtable.com over the past week. Have a great weekend, bye-bye.